This is Selma Schimmel at ASCO 2011. Conversations are going on here, and now we're going to sit with Dr. Sonali Smith, who was with us last year. And you are Associate Professor of Medicine, University of Chicago Medical Center. You are also a member of the ASCO Cancer Communications Committee. I want to welcome you back. Thank you so much for inviting me back, Selma. I had a lot of fun with this last year and uh, really enjoy being here again. Let's just first recap a little bit about the uh, poster session that you moderated here. So the poster session uh, that was done on Saturday uh, actually summarized about 20 different posters, all of which really looked at new treatments for uh, patients with non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And just by way of background, uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma is a very diverse disease. It's an umbrella term that covers about 60 different subtypes. And so one of the challenges we have uh, with developing new therapies is that it's really critical to make sure when we're learning about lymphoma or reading about the studies that we know exactly what subtype they were focused on. Uh, in the poster discussion session, there were some new uh, treatments that had been added onto the backbone of standard therapies, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. And uh, there were also some other studies that looked at uh, trying to really fine tune uh, which subtype of lymphomas responds to one treatment or another. So uh, I'll start with the first series of posters which really worked on or focused on an area called diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is the most common type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma that we see, and it's one that's potentially curable. It's uh, one where we can realistically talk to our patient about going through treatment and about all comers, 70% of patients can go through that course of therapy and never have the disease come back. However, that still leaves us with about a third of patients where it's a little more challenging. And so in the poster discussion session, um, investigators were adding new drugs such as lenalidomide and bortezomib uh, to the backbone of our CHOP, which is the standard recipe that we use for, these pati for patients with large cell lymphoma. And the early results were very promising. Um, in most of the studies that were presented, uh, they were focused very much on side effects, making sure that adding another treatment didn't make it much worse for the patient, and the preliminary results at least look as good, if not a little bit better, than our CHOP alone. So I think these are very promising. Uh, they really focused in on looking at effects in patients with what we consider high-risk disease. And so maybe in the future we can say our CHOP is great for uh, sort of the standard diffuse large B-cell lymphoma patient, but if they have high-risk features, maybe we can add in something else. Uh, the other uh, issue with lymphoma that I just want to bring up is that for many years we've had uh, debates on the role of transplant. So bone marrow transplant or stem cell transplant, those words are interchangeable today, um, is often used when lymphoma comes back. However, there were three studies in the oral session, all of which tried to use or at least tested whether or not a transplant up front if for patients who are newly diagnosed helped or not. And the rationale there is that if you wait until the lymphoma comes back before you do a transplant, you might have some patients that uh, their disease is resistant. And so perhaps if we bring up high dose chemotherapy, patients may do better. And the unifying theme for th all three of these studies, which were large international trials, one of them was all US based but included uh, you know, many, many institutions, the other two were in Europe, all of them showed that more is not better. And I think that's a very important concept for a lymphoma doctor, to, to know that even though um, transplant can be done up front, it didn't, didn't really help patients live longer. So that was very, very important news for us. You're on the younger side of the medical mm -hmm. oncology community, right. which means as your career advances, it's your generation that's really going to just prosper and benefit from all of this. You are very lucky to be the age you are, mm -hmm. at the place you are in medicine. You have so many years ahead of you to be part of this really dynamic change.